This is a very gentle lower body strength practice designed for your menstrual phase. So in the Lunae Roadmap of Exercise, we treat the menstrual phase as the first and last three to five days of each cycle. So it's those few days before your period arrives and then the first few days of your heaviest flow. So these are gentle practices where we are cultivating the energy of protect. So we are looking to protect our resources, protect our body, soothe inflammation, increase circulation, all of the things that can alleviate symptoms if they're present, or just allow us to make this transition with a little bit more ease. It is a transition phase where the body's making that shift from high hormone territory to low hormone territory, and it happens very quickly. It takes a tremendous effort. It takes this process of inflammation to facilitate a period. So it's energetically taxing. It might leave less in reserve for exercise. So rather than continuing at moderate to high intensities, we're dropping things way down. We want to stay around 50% of your maximum effort. And we're doing that today with the use of a resistance band. If you don't have a resistance band at home, you can always use a headband, a sports bra, you can tie something stretchy around your legs into like a mini loop. But if you don't have any of those at home, you can always do this practice body weight only and focus on cultivating the muscle engagement. So really activating the glutes, activating the legs. We have just 12 different exercises that we'll do with the mini loop resistance band today. And you have the option of moving through two rounds for about a 24 minute practice. This one won't have a separate warm up since we are sort of in the warm up intensity the entire way through. We can just jump right in, ease into it, and then I'll offer a few kind of closing stretches at the end just to show the lower body some love, release the glutes, the hip flexors, so that you feel balanced as you finish this practice. I want to really appreciate these low intensity days for what they can provide for your practice as a whole. So you're not, you're not losing momentum. You're not losing progress. In fact, you are promoting the, the recovery response. You are supporting your body's internal process right now. And that is important work. So please be gentle with yourself, be patient with this practice and be okay with the lower intensity. Again, this one is complete from start to finish. There's, there aren't any separate elements. The only modification you might make is if you take just a single round. If you want just 12 minutes of work, you can always skip right ahead to the cooling stretches by using the timestamps provided. I'll also provide a quick five minute meditation that you could add to the end of this practice. We end in a seated position and it's kind of this perfect invitation for a meditation practice. You can always just sit and breathe for a few minutes on your own, but if if you want something guided, I'll add that in the description of this video below as well. And now let's get started. Let's get started with our menstrual phase leg day for today. All you will need is a mini loop band. If you don't have this at home, you can also use an elastic headband, a sports bra that has a tight elastic, something that will give you a little bit of resistance. You might also have the fabric bands at home, but for some of these movement patterns, I recommend having the really stretchy rubber band so that you can get more range of motion and you can really create that tension on the band. We have a pretty simple structure today, a circuit of 12 exercises. Exercises. We're going to be moving through 40 seconds of work with 20 seconds of rest to transition should be very low intensity And we're going to go through that circuit two times. So the whole workout is 24 minutes No separate warm-up for today because most of these movements are going to be at our warm-up intensity anyway So we're using the workout itself as part of the warm-up. I will add a little bit of cool down at the end I will get our timer started. We have about 20 seconds on the clock. Our first movement pattern is just a lateral band walk. So you're gonna take that band, place it just above the knee. You can start on one side of your mat. When the time comes, we're going to lower into a squat. We're gonna stay in that squat for the full 40 seconds and simply step out and together, moving side to side. Let's come into position. Keep the chest lifted and step out and together out and together. So you can make these steps large or small, noting that the tension changes as you go from that stretched position in the band back to center. I want you to keep your knees mostly tracking forward. They might turn slightly out to stay in alignment with your feet. But again, you're moving slowly, nice and controlled. There's no urgency in this workout. I want you just to connect to your body 
And often we can do that a little bit better when we're moving slowly. We've got three, two, and one. Come up. Here we're going to come into a staggered squat to a hip extension. What that looks like is you're going to step one foot slightly behind, bring that back knee to the front heel into a staggered squat, and then you're going to come up, stay mostly upright, and get that little bit of extension. Doesn't have to be a huge lift. Here we go. And we take it down and extend. So I want you to feel that hip extension here, both, both hip points stay square to the front. You can lean slightly forward, but I want us to worry less about how high your leg goes and more about how much you can activate the glutes. So we're tapping back knee to front heel. You should feel that in the front quad a little bit. And then we've got that nice glute activation, hip extension here. This is a single-sided exercise, so our next interval will be the same exercise on the other side. And rest, shake it out, take a deep breath. So I want you to pay attention to your breath rhythm as an indicator of the intensity. So you should be able to talk nice and freely. You're breathing pretty easy through the nose and mouth. Here we go, two, one. In the menstrual phase, we are the first and last three to five days of each cycle. So we're in transition mode, going from a high hormone state to a low hormone state. That means inflammation is on the rise, our immune system comes back online, our estrogen levels are dropping very rapidly, and that means a lot of the feel-good hormones go along with it. So lower energy, perhaps mood disruptions. So we don't want to aggravate the system with high intensity. We want to support our body's rest with these lower intensity practices. Next up, we're coming into a different position with that band. You're gonna bring it around your feet this time. Center of the foot, wanna have a little bit of tension on that band from the beginning. We're just going to squat and then march with alternate knees. Let's begin. Here we go, we squat down and then pull. So I want you to feel a little bit of power to get that knee up to hip height. So keeping the spine straight takes a little bit of balance. You can use the arms almost like you're running in place with a little bit of resistance. If you can, try to control that foot placement back down so it's not snapping back into place. But you have that nice and easy lowering face. These intervals moving pretty quickly today, it seems and rest. We're going to keep that band around one foot this time. You're gonna take the band in the opposite hand for our single leg deadlift. So a couple of options here, you can keep that kickstand with the back foot down, or you can come into a full single leg deadlift where that back leg comes off the ground. Spine is straight, we hinge, you can take it down, feel that tension, and then come up. So it's slow, lower to halfway. Maybe your leg is reaching back or maybe you've got that back foot down. I want you to feel a little bit of power as you come into that upright stance. Lower the entire spine together as a unit and then come back up. You don't have to have that back leg straight if it comes off the ground. You can keep that knee bent, whatever allows you to maintain the level position of the pelvis and shoulders. Last one, and switch. So again, we're gonna come into the opposite side for that single leg deadlift. So we're in our starting position. You can either have back toes down or you can lift that back leg with each one. Let's get ready and begin nice and slow. So load the pattern, level the shoulders and hips, and then come back up. I like to just touch the toes down at that starting position, just to reset balance and come into the next rep from that stable place. Part of the gift of staying consistent with workouts through your menstrual phase is we're in this low intensity. We are creating more of that inner 
landscape awareness so you can pay closer attention to how you're feeling. You can move more slowly and rest. Next up is a prisoner squat with abduction. So you can have your band either above the knees, that'll be slightly easier, or around the ankles, maybe a little bit higher. That'll give you slightly more challenge. We're gonna bring the hands behind the head for a prisoner squat. And let's begin. So we come down into our squat, keep the chest lifted, come up and take one leg out to the side. I want you to keep that spine perfectly straight at the top. So you're not leaning away from that extended leg, but you are recruiting that outer glute strength to lift it up. We come down, chest lifts and out. Beware of flaring the low ribs here. I want you to stay connected to that low belly by lifting the pubic bone toward the navel, even as you come through that leg lift. Again, here we're moving slowly, carefully. Doesn't mean we're not doing the work, but we're getting more from each rep with that slow movement pattern. Don't focus too much on how many reps you have. Next up, you're gonna take that band around the feet, come into your bear plank position, and we're simply going to step back with alternating feet. So curl the hip points toward the low ribs, lift up, step back, and to center. Step back, maybe slightly out, and to center. The goal is to feel some tension on that band the entire time. Shoulders are over the wrists. We've got the belly drawing in. So try not to let that low belly soften, but it stays integrated, stays active and strong. Knees are directly under the hips, so we're not bringing them too close to the body. Should feel this fire up both your belly and your quads. And rest. We're gonna switch the position of that band to just above the knees for our donkey kicks for this one. I recommend taking half of the band under one knee so that it doesn't slip around on you. Coming into a quadruped position with the forearms down. And let's begin. So here, really want you to focus on fixing the position of the lower back, the hips, so that you're only moving that leg. Don't want your lower back to arch at all. So keep that position fixed the entire time and then press the sole of that working leg, press that foot up to the ceiling. Keep the hips square. It's almost like you're resisting the arch of the belly by hugging the hip points and the lower ribs to the center together. The natural tendency is to wanna to arch your back a lot to get higher, but that takes the work out of the glutes. So we're gonna switch. I'm gonna place it under my other knee now so that the band doesn't slip around too much. And we'll come into donkey kicks on the other side. Let's begin, lift it up and back down. So again, commit to that position in the hips and low spine. They're not moving. You've got both hips pointing forward, so they're not twisting, not leaning side to side. And it's all in the glute. It's, it takes extra focus and concentration to keep that lower back from arching. So again, it's that point of focus that we have more access to in the menstrual phase. We have less hormone interference and rest. From here, we're going to take that band just below the knee so that we can spread the knees nice and wide. Come into a prone position all the way onto your belly. Bring the heels, big toe, mounds of the feet together, inner heels together, take your knees wide. We are going to pump the legs up with a slight press out. Here we go, lift it up, press out. So you lift the legs, press the knees slightly out and come back down. Should feel this in the meaty part of the glutes. So I want you to get as high as you can, again, without excessive arch in the lower back. Your lower back will fire. It's part of the posterior chain. I don't want us to be afraid of that work, but it should feel 
integrated shouldn't feel like strain. After this, we're going to roll over onto the back for simple glute bridge with abduction. So you can take that band above the knee, come into your bridge position. Here's where I really want you to connect to the glutes. So it's the same idea as we had in the donkey kick. I want you to fix the position of the lower back and only let the pelvis move. Here we go, lift it up, squeeze and press out. Slowly lower down. Lift up, squeeze and press out. I want you to maybe try hovering the hips so you don't have to come all the way down to the floor. Keep a little bit of tension on the glutes there. Lift it up, out, and down. If you wanna bring your feet a little bit closer together, more of that butterfly press, we'll just change the, the way the glutes are recruited just slightly so you can have the feet hips or shoulder width apart or together here and rest. You're going to keep that band where it is. We just have one more round through those exercises. Hopefully this one feels short and sweet. So that means we're at the halfway point here. You could always stop your workout here and call it, move straight to the cool down, or we'll start with that lateral band walk now. So we step it out and together. Should feel pretty warm after that first round. But again, it's not overly activating, not high exertion. It's just that slow, steady state effort. Anytime we bring the legs into that working zone, you will feel that whole body kind of energy demand. So I really want you to pay attention to, again, your breath. You wanna stay right around the 50% mark. So you're in your warm up zone, keeping it nice and easy, and come up. Next up, we have that staggered squat with the hip extension. So again, you're bringing your back knee to your front heel and lifting that leg straight back. Hips stay square, lower back is neutral. Let's get ready to move in three, two, one. Here we go. Staggered squat, come up and extend. If you need to, you can always bring a hand to a chair or a wall so you can get a little bit more balance if needed to get that full activation of the glute. Again, this doesn't have to be a huge range of motion. It can be nice and close together, but a really strong activation in the glute. Again, notice your lower back. Try not to let it arch. Sometimes I find having hands on the hips can help fix that position and rest. We'll come into the second side next. So same thing, staggered squat with a hip extension. So again, I want you to imagine like when you come up, your pelvis isn't moving. It's not going to allow the lower back to arch. That'll help keep the work in the glutes and begin. You've got your stance wide enough that you have constant tension on that band. So that might look like hips width, maybe slightly wider apart, wherever you need to be to feel that starting tension on the band. Again, I'm using my hands to hold the pelvis in place and you even get a little bit of feedback with the working side. You might be able to feel the glute activate <laughs> beneath your hands keeping the spine straight and strong. Last two and one. We're coming into our squat with the hip flexion, our march. So we're gonna bring that band around the feet here. Again, you want constant tension on that band so your feet are wide enough that you feel that right from the beginning. Let's get ready, come into your squat and then march with one leg at a time. So again, I want you to feel that power in the hip flexor. Use your breath, find that strong exhale, and you are upright. So we're not leaning forward, we are marching. We are lifting that leg straight up, not rounding down to meet the knee, but lifting that knee to about hip height. Kind of depends on 
what type of band you're using. Hopefully you have a stretchy one at home or something that allows enough range of motion where you can develop that force in the hip flexors. After this, we're coming to our single leg deadlift. So you can wrap the band around one foot, take the other end in your opposite hand, coming into our single leg deadlift. So shoulders are over the hips. We're going to lower the spine together and lift it together. Again, hips and shoulders stay square. Here we go. Take it down, feel that tension release, and then come up. So should get easier, easier, easier here in position, and then come back up. You can use your opposite hand for balance. Really want you to focus on mechanics for this movement pattern. See what you can learn about how your body moves in this way that you could carry with you into the weighted version of this exercise. So can you really root down through the big toe mound, pinky toe mound of the foot, and then the inner and outer heel to stabilize that standing leg. Let's switch sides. Love using menstrual phase practice to kind of try on different movement patterns with body weight or light resistance, and then use what you learn in that practice with weight later on. Let's get ready. Here we go. Shoulders and hips nice and even. Again, we're not letting the lower back arch. Spine stays in that neutral alignment all the way down and all the way up. Almost like a robot. Like you just imagine this very mechanical shift down and back up. I find that with the beautiful curves we have in our spine, sometimes it's hard to go back to this kind of fixed position. We want the spine to flow and move and bend. So this is one time where I would ask that you keep that spine very still, very neutral. And rest. You can release that band. Our next one is going to be the prisoner squat with the abduction. So again, a couple options for positioning the band here. You can either have it around your ankles or mid shins, or you can have it around the upper thighs. Slightly different loading there depending on which position you choose. So again, we want constant tension on that band. Want your knees to track forward if possible. All 10 toes track forward. So we've got this nice neutral alignment in the pelvis and we lower down into that squat and up into the abduction. So I felt my body leaning away there. I want you to take that lean out. So keep the spine straight up and down and then lift the leg. That will take a lot of the supporting musculature out and focus it on the glutes. Next up, we have our bear plank step backs. So you're going to take that band around your feet come into your bear plank position. Make sure that your knees are directly under your hips, that your hips aren't too far back or too far forward. Shoulders are directly over the wrists. You want some tension under that band, come into bear plank, which means your stance might be slightly wider in the feet than you're used to, because I want you to feel that tension on the band from the outset. Again, you're continuing to activate the low belly drawing in with the space between pubic bone and navel. Got that slight curl under of the tail. We're fixing the position of the spine. Can't tell where I feel this more in the quads or in the belly. That little bit of tension really helps everything come online. And step it back. Donkey kick is next. That means we're taking the band just above the knee. And again here, I recommend bringing that band underneath the supporting leg so that it's not going to move around on you. I like to bring the forearms down. You can stay up on the hands if that's preferred. Here we go. So right from the start, fix the position of the spine. Really target the glutes. This is a great one to either do in front of a mirror or just take a quick video on your phone so you can really see how much the lower spine wants to move. For a long time, I did this exercise, and every time 
I would let that lower spine move. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of control to keep that pelvis neutral. Last one. And we'll switch here. So again, you're just taking that band under the supporting leg and above the knee, excuse me, under that supporting knee and then above the knee for the working leg. Again, you can come down onto forearms or stay up on your hands. Here we go, lift it up and back down. Part of the reason I enjoy taking this on the forearms is I find it helps me not arch the back. When the hands are up, feels a little bit more challenging to keep that alignment. So again, you might have the knees just slightly wider than shoulder width so that you have that starting tension on the band, but then you're letting that the center of your working thigh move straight up and straight down. And at the same time, you're hugging your hip points toward your low ribs, resisting that arch in the back. And now we're going to take that band just below the knee, come onto your belly for our frog lifts. So again, knees are nice and wide. You've got tension on that band. You bring the inner edges of the feet, inner heels, big toes together and keep them together as you lift the thighs off the mat. Here we go. Slight press out with the knees. You can rest your forehead on your hands. I want you to keep your hip bones, hip points grounded on the mat, pubic bone on the mat. So you feel that very intentional squeeze of the glutes. Come up, press the knees slightly out. Doesn't have to be a big press. Just that little bit of activation there. We are so close to the end. We have just one exercise after this. Again, try to keep that lower spine as neutral as you can. Slowly come up, switch onto your back next. This time we're taking that band just above the knee. And remember you have the option of bringing the feet together if you want more of the outer glutes or you're keeping the feet parallel, about hips width distance apart. Again, we want starting tension on the band. We're going to lift up, press it out and back down. Lift up, press it down. So I want you to scoop the tailbone under at the top and come down. And even bring the soles of the feet together if you're in that butterfly shape. And you might take this more like a half rep, so don't come all the way down. So that you keep a little bit of tension on the glutes the whole time. This is an exercise I used to always feel in my lower back. So if you're having that sensation, I really want you to scoop the tailbone under, take the arch out, and rest. You can ditch your band, set it off to the side. We're gonna take a few stretches here on the back and we will get the legs nice and cooled down to close out our workout. So first off, we're going to cross the right ankle over the left knee. I want you to hug that shape of the legs in close to the body. Maybe you rock side to side here. Feel the inner thighs, outer glutes stretch. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed. Again, we're not looking for extremes here. We just kind of want to reset the resting length of the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads with this gentle stretch. You might feel a lot of sensation even just getting into this position. Let's switch sides. Left ankle over the right knee. You can use your left elbow to open that left knee even more. I always like to rock side to side but keep the shoulders nice and still. You might decide to close your eyes just a bit so you can really experience the sensation where the stretch is happening, where you feel the gentle work of today's practice. And you're breathing normally here in and out through the nose, just really facilitating that recovery process by lengthening your exhales. And then from here, we're going to turn onto the left side, hug your knees close to your chest, stack the knees so you've got that bent knee position, reach both arms out in front of you, straight out from the chest, and then open your right arm out to the right. 
gaze over your right fingertips. I want you to keep your legs super heavy here so they're resisting that twist so that you can feel that release in the low spine. This one more focused on the upper body and kind of the release in the upper back, but I love this after leg days just to give some love to the lower back. Twists tend to be very balancing, kind of return the body to neutral, help your nervous system recalibrate. And we're slowly going to come through center, this time roll to your right side. Keep those arms out to T, hug your knees into your chest, and then we'll open the left arm out to the left, gaze over your left fingertips. Again, try to glue the inner knees together, keep the legs heavy, and then breathe into the twist. So feel the little bit of pressure in the low back, low belly, as you try to inflate the lungs. You should try to create that expansion, and then soften into the exhale. We'll be here just a breath or two more. And then I want you to close the twist. You can roll to your right side once again. We'll come into tabletop, just move through a few rounds of cat and cow spine. So again, shoulders are over the wrists, hips are directly over the knees. As you inhale, shine your sitting bones back, soften the belly, send your gaze all the way up, press it down through your hands. And as you exhale, press your palms energetically forward, knees energetically back, round the spine, draw your chin to your chest, press through your hands, reverse it. So from your sitting bones, start to create that curve in the spine, hug the knees and hands together, soften the shoulders, gaze up, and then exhale round. I want you to map the movement to your breath rhythm. So the full inhale, that's how long it takes you to open the spine, extend the spine, and then the complete exhale brings you back. Last big breath here. And exhale. Find your neutral spine once again. This time we'll take the knees nice and wide. Bring the big toes to touch for a child's pose. You can rest your forehead on your hands. Sway the hips side to side. So feel some stretch in the hips, softening in the belly, relaxing the spine. Turning your awareness inward. And then only when you're ready will come up. I want to create a zigzag shape with the knees. So both knees pointing to the right to start. I want you to flex both feet, and then we're going to bring that right elbow, right hand back behind you, lower down to the mat, and stretch your left arm up and overhead. Bring your left hand behind your head, and then arc away from your left inner knee. I want you to fix the inner knee, really glue it to the mat. You can even engage the glutes a little bit, try and curl the tailbone under until you feel that deep hip flexor stretch. So you're lifting the left armpit up and away from that left inner knee flexing the glutes, curling the tail under, signaling the hip flexors to lengthen and relax. And then slowly come back up. I love this stretch for giving us access to the hip flexors without needing to have the knees completely flexed. You can have this kind of generous angle in the knees while still getting access to the hip flexor. So this time, left hand comes behind. You can bring that left forearm down. Sweep the right arm overhead. Bring that right hand behind your head. And then arc the heart and chest up and away from your inner right knee. So you're really gluing that inner knee down, flexing the right foot, and then engage the glutes. So it's like you're trying to tuck your tailbone under. You should feel some sensation in the hip flexor there. Breathe here. Lengthen the side waist. Big, beautiful stretch. Last breath. And then slowly come up. One final stretch. We'll come into our straddle position. So the feet are nice and wide. <sighs> Definitely feeling the strength work from this cycle in the inner thighs. It's okay if your legs don't open to that wide angle today. I want you to flex the feet, press down through the backs of the knees to engage the quads, and then any amount, whoo, lower down. 
my range very minimal today. I'm definitely feeling some tightness in the inner thighs. So take several deep breaths here, maybe lowering a little bit more with each exhale, feeling that beautiful stretch along the spine. Again, keep the quads active here. Head and neck relaxed. Last big breath. And let it go. Slowly start to walk your hands up. You can come into a seated position, whatever is most comfortable for you. We have completed our practice for today. If you like, this might be a beautiful place to take one to five minutes of meditation, maybe just closing your eyes, turning inward, really paying attention to, to attention, excuse me, to sensations from your body. But otherwise, if this is the end of your practice, I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for showing up during this time in your cycle. It can be a tricky time to navigate when it comes to working out and you still showed up for yourself. You put in the work in the way that is most supportive for you. So I want to celebrate that effort. Thank you for being here and for letting your body be moved.